This is the first in a series of short videos where I'll be focusing on different aspects of the Grunt's 15mm sci-fi game. This particular episode is just about the shooting and damage resolution. This has been played out on a very small 4 foot by 4 foot table, which has just been set up so I can demo these different conditions in the game. You could actually play a game out on a 4 foot by 4 foot table if you wanted a small skirmish with just a few units of grunts but you'll find that if you've got lots of vehicles in play you'll need a lot more room uh, just because of the ranges on the vehicles are, are much further and they can move quite a distance across the board. These figures in the foreground are from Ground Zero Games, that's a Kravac grav tank, a heavy grav tank and it's facing off a Bulldog high mobility wheeled vehicle and a Paladin over in the back right hand corner which is sporting a high energy laser. The standard squad size in Grunts is six models, but you can have two squad attachments. Every member of the six-man squad has the same weaponry apart from this one squad attachment figure which has a heavy plasma. He activates at the same time as the rest of the squad, uh, but does fire different weaponry. The squad attachment provides that extra punch needed to potentially damage a vehicle and lay down some covering fire for the rest of the squad. There are squad coherency rules, but for this short video I'll be focusing on just the shooting and damage resolution. This is the Grunt Standard Ruler that is available from S6 Engineering in the UK. The Grunt's unit gets two actions. It can move and shoot. If it uses both of those actions to do a move, it can move 8 inches. But Grunts have a standard move of 4 inches unless they're augmented by some sort of special backpacks or other alien technology that makes them move a bit quicker which are detailed in the rules. The ruler I'm using here also doubles as a turning angle for some of the vehicle movement which will be covered in another video. So this squad has moved their four inches and can now fire. I'm looking at their shoot skill of five and the weapon standard range of 10 with a damage of six. You can fire a weapon up to double the range listed but it's most effective within the range listed on the card. In Grunt's 15mm sci-fi you can pre-measure the range and this is what they're shooting at which is a Gauss machine gun set up in that control tower. The guard statistic details how difficult it is to hit a model. This one has a guard of 12 plus a plus one from having soft cover from the railings on the tower. Every model in the game Grunt has the guard statistic in the case of the Gauss machine gun specialist up in that tower, he has a guard of 12 with a plus one for the soft cover of the railings. This means I have a target to hit of 13 with my dice roll plus the shoot skill of the Kravac. So with a shoot skill of 5 and my dice roll of 9, I've got a total of 14. But in fact I only needed 13 to hit. There are other modifiers to shooting. For example, if I hadn't moved to the Kravac grunt squad, they would get a plus one to their shoot skill for not moving this turn. There is also a modifier for firing at extreme range. To speed up play you can roll pairs of coloured dice like this and roll the full attack for the grunt squad in one go, so I've got six pairs of coloured dice. The grunt squad shoot is five, so I needed eight to hit target of thirteen for that machine gunner up in the nest. So I have three hits in total, one of them's a critical because of the double six. And I can see here, he has a soak of 13, the machine gun specialist. The soak statistic is like an armor factor, which needs to be equaled or beaten to do any damage to the model. Naturally, the tanks and vehicles have much higher soaks. And this Kravac squad have medium lasers, which do 6 damage. So they need to equal or beat the score of 13, which is the soak of the machine gunner up in that tower. Because I rolled a double six on the shoot skill with those black dice, I can simply re-roll one of the two dice and take the new figure because it was a critical attack. You don't add the two different pairs of dice together. Each one is treated as an individual source of damage that's hitting the Gauss machine gun specialist. This model has been waxed, which in Grunt's terminology means he's basically ready to die. There are conditions where you can use a medic to bring them back, so you mark the target model with a waxed counter. The damage resolution was basically rolling a 2d6, adding the laser damage of 6, and trying to equal or beat the soak statistic. 
If you equal it at 13, you do one point of damage. Everything over the 13 will do an additional point of damage. Each set of those paired dice was representing one of the grunts models firing, so you don't add them all together, they're all treated as separate damage being done to the target. The grunt squad only has one damage point per member of the squad. However, in this instance, they were firing on a specialist unit which had five damage blocks which needed to be filled in, uh, which we managed to do with that very good couple of dice rolls. Now warming up this grav tank, which is a Kravak heavy grav tank. It has a large gauss cannon as its main weaponry and a move of eight. It can move up to double that if it does a double move. I'm doing a single move here and I'm going to use the grunt's ruler since it's got an 18 side to it and I'm only going in a straight line because I can see that bulldog is clearly in my sights. The Kravak tank is now going to take aim at that bulldog. The bulldog is a high mobility wheeled vehicle from Ground Zero Games. Um, it can act as an APC or a command vehicle. When firing a vehicle you use the skill statistic of the crew. The skill statistic is separate from the normal shoot that grunts have and represents their ability to use equipment, tanks, vehicles or anything else that they can get their hands on during a game. The Bulldog has a guard of 10 and my skill is 5 so I only actually need 5s to hit and I've rolled a 7. The large gauss cannon is doing damage of 12, but it has an armor piercing of 4, which means it does an additional damage of 4 to any hard targets like a tank. So already it's doing 16 damage, and it's adding that 2d6 roll of 6 to it for a total of 22. So I'm filling in the damage here, and I happen to fill in a critical as part of that process. Remember it's the damage over that soak factor that gets through and marks on the damage track. Because I filled in a C, I have to do this critical systems check. And when the first C is filled in, you have to roll a D6 for each of the three systems. On a roll of one, you'll lose that system. When the second critical box is filled on the damage track, a roll of one on two will cause the system to fail. And the third C is a roll of one, two or three. Using a critical system, doesn't destroy the vehicle but it does reduce its performance on the battlefield so for example losing mobility reduces you to only making a single move you can't double flank move the vehicle anymore here's a quick view of the tokens used in grunts from left to right you've got condition brown which means your units on the run overwatch which is an optional rule prone uh, which is when you put your figures down on the ground to get good cover for shooting waxed which is the little skull and the suppressed token a suppressed unit can only make one of its two actions on its turn unless a commander nearby removes the suppression token with its push move option. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video.